Today, I bring you one of the best modern Ferraris ever made. The iconic Ferrari 458 Italia that now is over a decade old is still futuristic today. If anything, the 458 has a beautiful design, nice simplicity of the interior, and the sound of the high revving engine. The following Ferrari V8 successors after the Ferrari 458 just never sound as awesome as this one and still is one of the most gorgeous modern Ferraris with interesting historical body lines inspired from the classic Ferraris. And that is why I love everything about the 458 and I can't wait to review this amazing masterpiece. So here are essential facts about why most supercar guys like more the Ferrari 458 over the 488 including the F8 Tributo and the latest Ferraris of all time and also should you buy it. Yes, if you love and know much about Ferraris, it's an instant take. There are many reasons why the 458 is so more special than the newer Ferraris. For starters, the 458 Italia officially debuted at the 2009 Frankfurt Motor Show, designed by Pininfarina, and received a complete new redesign and replaced the F430 and the F430 Scuderia. When the 458 first came out, it was the newest Ferrari to roll out from the factory and been designed to be Ferrari's sportiest V8 mid-engine supercar to distinguish itself from the entry-level original Ferrari California, with the styling, features, and enhanced components. The 458 was definitely a big improvement over the predecessor F430. As much as the F430 is also an amazing car, the 458 appears and feels much sharper and the transmission is dramatically quicker with improved aerodynamics, braking, and acceleration. Another thing that made the 458 very special is because this was the final mid-engine and the final Ferrari period to use a naturally aspirated V8 engine. The engine was improved, much better, more powerful, and placed in the middle of the car to optimize the balance. Just like the 430, the number 458 indicate the overall displacement and the numbers of the cylinders in the engine, which means as such the 4.5 liter V8 engine. Just like the predecessor, the 458 feature a 180 degree flat plane crankshaft which results higher in quick revving RPMs. The engine screens up to an outstanding 9,000 RPMs and produces 562 brake horsepower. That is 59 to 79 horses more than the 430 scooter rear and the original F430 and generates 398 pound feet of torque. That is very impressive from a supercar. As a result, the Ferrari 458 will fly to 0 to 60 mile per hour in 3.4 seconds, which is two tenths faster than its predecessor, thanks to the brilliant 7 speed dual clutch transmission. The 458 was the first mid engine Ferrari to have a dual clutch automatic by Gertag to replace the F1 Classic gated manual from the F430, the 360, and the 355, so on. Despite that, combined with direct fuel injection system for the first time improved the combustion efficiency, which means the 458 is better in every way than the F430. The 458 only came with one gearbox, which is the dual clutch, unfortunately. It will reach to the same top speeds of 210 mph or 340 km an hour if you push the car hard enough, while the estimate top speed is over 202 mph and weighs about 3,274 pounds. There were of course a few different variants of the 458 throughout a 6 year production run. First started as a coupe in 2009, then the challenge car in 2010, the convertible aka the spider in 2011, the track focus speciale in 2013, and then finally the second open top version speciale di Aperta for 2014 through 2015. The 458 Italia styling and design in my opinion is really pretty and still subjectively ahead of its time for a 12 year old Ferrari. Looking at the 458 has some decent smooth lines and is a work of art. The compact design focused on reducing weight and lowering its center of gravity. The aerodynamic features include side air intakes and the opening vent front grille. The flat underbody has air intakes for cooling the engine bay. The two air intakes in the back wing direct cooler air to the oil radiators for the gearbox and the transmission while dragging out the hot air. The triple exhaust pipe absolutely fits the look of the 458 and gives it a track ready look, just like the F40. Next up at the front end, the headlights actually gives off an angry look and much larger than a previous car. 
The 458 has dotted LEDs inspired from Audi's first generation R8, which is one of the coolest techniques of the 458 and makes it more moderate. The wheels with the Prince and Horse badge and the brake calipers with the Ferrari logo looks good. What makes the 458 specs appealing and design is that this is one of the last cars to be influenced by Italian design company Pininfarina. The model isn't too overstyled and so simple and recognizable. If you are curious to ask, have I seen a Ferrari 458 in the real world? Yup, here you go. Unfortunately, I've never got to sit in a car because it was barricaded by the banner, but in person, she appeared in red and so lovely. Hey, that's also what the color red represents. Speaking of hopping inside the car, the interior is incredibly detailed and mildly sophisticated with most buttons aimed towards the driver. The interior is designed to reduce curb weight, but like other Ferraris, it has a mixture of luxury, sport, and style. The interior design of the Ferrari 458 was done by Urchin Repetto, the leader design of the interior, and Michael Schumacher, the retired F1 driver. The ergonomics of the cockpit were developed with the help of Schumacher. His idea was to establish all the buttons on the steering wheel so the driver never has to take his or her hands off the wheel which is a small idea driving on a race course or the streets. The turn signals are mounted on the steering wheel to use, mounted headlight button, magnetic suspension button for wide height to go over bumps, and windshield wiper buttons. Below the wipers, there is a wet dial that allows you to insist driving modes, wet, sport, race, trash control off, instability control off, and using them actually changes the characteristics of how the car behaves. There's the red start engine button and the mounted gear shifting pedals which does a great job handling the horsepower and changing gears so rapidly. The five lights at the top is the shifting lights will flash to indicate when you need to shift up. In the center is the circular climate control knobs. The 458 has power launch control, reverse, automatic, and the hazard lights button. The seats has leather and contrasting stitching and the gauge clusters with the yellow RPM tachometer and two digital screens only. All information is displayed right in the cluster so there is no infotainment screen. Moving on to practicality, the 458 Italia has a trunk space of 8.1 cubic feet of cargo, which is not big, but good for minimum luggages for a quick drive. The Ferrari team combined great design with advanced technology to create a car that is amazingly fun to drive. This Ferrari represents the last screaming naturally aspirated masterpiece from Maranello before they turbocharged the next car such as the 488 GTB which offers more power, but the linear torque curve and high RPM excitement are unmatched. That's part of the reason why most Ferrari fans love the 458 more than most modern Ferraris in terms of sounding mix, gorgeous body design, and the driving experience. Hence why aftermarket exhausts can make the car's specs unique. The 458 Italia is surprisingly by far the most popular V8 Ferrari and the most common Ferrari out on the road and arguably the best modern mid-engine V8 Ferrari to come out. If you've ever seen a 458 on the road, there is every reason for you to stand and stare. The overall styling has had enough inputs from Pininfarina to improve the attractiveness than the F430 it replaced. I bet the 458 is amazing to drive for crazy amounts of fun factor and handles greats and corners with a ton of grip and is really fast. Also one of the safest cars for any supercar you can get. So since this is a common Ferrari, I can assure the 458 is reliable. But the real question is, is it capable of daily commuting? Maybe? Average trunk capacity, two seats, and a 200 mile per hour Ferrari is somewhat capable like some other supercars out there. The 458 is one of my favorite Ferraris of all time alongside the Marinello, and when I get a chance to experience the real car besides virtual reality, it'll become of the cars I want to own. You just got to love this thing. A dream car, beautiful, the car that got you into cars, however you want to describe it. It's that type of car. Now, if you're still watching this video, I'm sure this will put a smile on your face. Because I can't just mention a 458 Italia without a bit of nostalgia. And I think you know where I am going with this. And that's probably the reason why you clicked on this video so fast based on a thumbnail. 
So if you're watching this video right now who plays racing games like Forza Motorsport, you come to the right place. If you remember Forza Motorsport 4, which released in October 2011 for Xbox 360, the Ferrari 458 marked as a cover car for Motorsport 4 and arguably one of the best Forza Motorsport game in the entire series. This game also turned 10 years old this month in October 11, 2021, celebrating its 10th year anniversary with this Ferrari. Until this day, this 458 still resembles the new mid-engine Ferraris and one of the common cars people drive in many racing games for so many years. And yes, this had to be part of this video. And this is where I'm going to officially wrap up this video of the Ferrari 458 Italia review. And I hope you guys really did find this video very interesting. And if this made your day some type of way, make sure to leave a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time for some more upcoming car reviews. And you are more than welcome to give me any car suggestions down below. Now let's officially walk to the 458 Atelier, get inside, and put the keys into the ignition or press the engine start button. And make sure to adjust your headphone volume for the insane F1 inspired sound. Peace out.